Okay, I haven't come on and talked in a couple of days. I have this whole little thing set up different now. So it's just like, oh, it could fall <laughs> any second. I remembered I had, a, you know, for my camera, one of those um, things. I don't know. It's not going to call a telescope. One of those things you put your camera on and then you can leave it standing there. Um, I forgot I had one of those things, so I'm trying that, but it's like, ooh, it's very wonky. <laughs> like, barely move. I think I could breathe hard and it would, uh, move. Um, anyways, so I've just been, uh, I don't know. It seems like really busy. I'm always busier anyways when it's spring and it's nice outdoors weather. Like, I can just go outside and just sit and just do nothing just sit and listen to the wind and the trees and just relax for hours hours and hours and um i so i've been doing that some and going to the lake and doing some projects around the house and getting some flowers planted and stuff like that and um you know, I, 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 to me, everything has just been like magical, like everything in my life. It just keeps seeming like, man, it is magical. I feel bad that people, you know, aren't experiencing it. And what I have noticed, so this is my perspective. This is what I have noticed, um, that there is people who are waking up, but they're not waking up to this whole thing at once. You know, none of us woke up to the whole thing at once, you know, so I mean, it only makes sense. They're going to wake up little bit by little bit, but definitely people who I know who are asleep are starting to question, not the whole reality, but things in reality. You know what I mean? So they're starting to question this or that. But they haven't gotten to the whole picture yet. Because <laughs> then you see like, you know, this is a three-dimensional fake world. The matrix that was built by someone else. Uh, these souls are so focused and in, in, trapped in this uh, enslavement system here that they aren't, um, they aren't moving forward or whatever. You know, they're just like trapped in this... Um, Thing. you're getting lessons and stuff. I mean, earth is a school and that finished, you know, the duality thing that that part is done. So, um, anyways, it's, uh, the whole thing is just so it, it's just this fake reality. And so when I was talking to my daughter this morning and she was talking about one of my daughters, and she, which by the way, you know, after I released all that stuff the other day, all of a sudden all my daughters started calling me. <sighs> like, how weird is that? They didn't know that I did that whole thing where I just like released uh, this energy of like expecting, um, if you didn't see before when I was talking about uh, this expectation as a mom, like when you have these kids, especially if you come from being damaged, you know, you come from having a hard time growing up and you didn't really, uh, you know, you're spending your whole life healing. So then you have kids, you have this expectation, you know, like you have your own little team, you know, they're, they're, they're going to be there for you. Now you have your own family and stuff. So, you know, when I release that energy, all of a sudden they all start calling me. So, except for one, she still isn't, but she's the youngest and she has, uh, you know, I mean, she has every right to go through her stuff. You know, I was still processing a lot of my childhood, definitely in my late twenties, I think in my early thirties, I remember that one counselor, I was married and had kids and she told me, you know, just shut the fuck up about it get over it. It's done. You had teenager parents who weren't, shouldn't have been parents, <laughs> you know, get over it. I was like, yeah, thank you for calling me out on that because it is time to move on. So, um, but that's what I'm noticing though, is that, um, she so just texted me. Uh, so I'll go back to talking about that. So she was talking about, you know, she wanted, uh, she's having, she's going through, um, a lot of stuff in hers is like playing out on her, 
professional, like our work and with those people and dynamics and um, bureaucracy and lies and just the whole thing, you know, it's all playing out for her right now. I was getting her to question her reality a lot. And anyway, she said, I just got, I got to get out of here. I've just got to go on a trip or something, which I'm going next week. I was going to go this week, but then it was going to rain. And I was like, well, I should just wait another week, you know, because it's so beautiful right now. I don't want to go when it's raining. I think it's going to be raining. I think it's just, gonna, you know, we had a beautiful week here in the Pacific Northwest. Now we're going into the rainy season. So uh, I'll just be going in the rain. But it's going to be beautiful no matter what. And I'm going to stop and I'm going to do videos as I'm going and show, you know, it's supposed to be just a totally picturesque, beautiful. So I'm going to, you know, do videos and share them so everybody can see. Um, anyway, she was saying she wanted to go somewhere. And I was like, you know, that's where you got to trust. You know, you got to have faith. You got to trust. You got to go. Listen to your inner, your internal dialogue is telling you, you know, let's get the fuck out of here. You know, fucking go. And um, she's like, well, I don't have money for that. Which, I, you know, one thing is about her. I know she does. She's got savings. And, and she probably got money in her account. She just, you know, she hasn't, you know, put it aside for the past year and planned it and stuff. You know, she can't be spontaneous. She's very type A driven. She's like so much like me. I just, so many things in her that I see how I was that I was just like, oh, I just want to you know, pull it out of her. Like, oh, it's horrible when you have these parts of yourself that were self-destructive and you see it in someone else. But um, anyway, so I was telling her to go and, um, you know, she's like, oh, I can't, you know, I've got to focus on this and that. And I was like, you got to focus on your internal dialogue. You got to focus on what's best for you, taking time for yourself. And stop being so caught up in the three-dimensional world because this is all fake. It's all an illusion. None of this stuff is real. And, um, you know, just because you can touch it and feel it and smell it and stuff, that's just, uh, that doesn't make it more real because real would be significant, right? If it really has an effect, it would have a significant impact, which it will as a whole soul journey. But each little thing does not have the impact as which, you know, that is described to us that it should. Like, you know, I, they sit there with all these people who are so focused on this one life. I got one. Oh, just, oh it's a lot of pressure. What am I going to do? I got to be perfect. No, and if I'm not perfect, I'm not getting into heaven. So, you know, that's an illusion right there. So all that energy, all that time wasted, all is a fake illusion because it's not real. It doesn't matter how much effort you give that or whatever. You're going to be born again. You're going to have to do it over and over and over and over and over. That's just, that's the way it works. If you're a soul, <laughs> you're going into bodies, you're going into anything. Because everything's got energy. No matter where you're going, that's what you're doing. You know, it's just going all the time. So, um, you know, and that's part of the dialogue. That's part of what is fed to us. These paradigms, these fake paradigms. And, you know, you put all this energy into it. But it's all fake. It's not real. You find the real truth when you go inside yourself. Because your yourself is trying to tell you. And right now, I think that selves are screaming, like, please listen. <laughs> and, you know, they're so caught in this three to minute. I told her, you know, you're trying to be so perfect, but who is it for? Like, whose rules are you following? Why, why are you trying to be perfect? Who's it for? You know, question these things. Question everything. That's what I'm constantly telling my kids and my grandkids question everything don't that is what a soul needs to do is question everything because you will find your answers inside so if you're not questioning everything then you're taking other people's answers and you're living by those you're living by other people's rules you're living by other people's expectations so you know pull it back to yourself look look to self to guide you 
And, you know, um, when your self is telling you, you know, let's go, we got to get out of here, then you will be taken care of. If you have the desire, if you have this desire, it's given to you by your higher self, by God, however you want to see it, however you understand what's out here around us. I mean, fuck, most people just think there's a big old guy up there in robes standing there, you know, fighting with the guy over there, the red guy with the horns. And uh, I don't know. Uh, but you, you know, you just, you just need to, however it is, get in touch with, because there is an internal dialogue. You have you know, if it's, if it's really focusing in on your emotions, like how does this make me feel, you know? And, um, but when you are not quite there yet, you know, when you're feeling those emotions, it can feel like anxiety and stuff because it's something different, something new. So, you know, it can be a challenge, but you just, you don't stop. You just keep going and keep going and keep questioning and keep trying to look for the answers inside and listen to the responses, listen to how you feel and what moves you, what makes you want to go. And when you are guided to go someplace, it will be taken care of. It, it, that's just how it works. You know, even if it's not like they send you a check in the mail, like, oh, here's a thousand dollars, you know, take that trip that we told you about. Sometimes it'll happen that way, but other times you just have to trust. You got to go like, fuck, I mean, I'm going. And then you go. And th this is what I was telling my uh, daughter when she was planning this big uh, wedding in Costa Rica. And it happened, <clears throat> you know, we went just, uh, I've talked about this before, because we went, we just got back from Costa Rica when um quarantine happened and um you know we had traveled international so uh they all got sick you know a bunch of people got sick and then they got us sick so i got sick at the very beginning of the whole thing and it was like i don't know two or three days of barely even anything i mean i've had so many flus so much worse than that but anyways um but before we went, you know, when she was planning this thing and then she's stressing out like, well, how's so-and-so going to get there? How's so-and-so going to get there? And I said, you don't worry about all that stuff. You just start planning. You start putting out there what you want because the money will come. It just comes. You set the intention like I'm going to go on this trip. I'm going to go do this. And you just trust. Money just comes. <laughs> it just and you get your trip. But if you sit there and you go, oh, I really want to go to, you know, wherever. I really want to go to Mexico. Oh, I want to go. I want to go my whole life. Oh, I just want to go to Mexico. And you just, um, uh, but, you know, I'll never get there. I'll, I'll never go. I'll never, you'll never go. You, it, it's just how it works. Because you are, that's the control you have over your life. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how to get it into your head any more than that is it, it's however you see it, it's going to go. And so that's why having trust and faith and connection is so important because that's trust and faith in yourself. It's not just like the guy up there in the robes or the guy over there with the horns. It's trusting in yourself that your connection, you know, you're going to be taken care of. If you've got the desire, I, I need to go this place then you will be guided to go there. But, you know, so many people, they have these like inner, uh, I don't know, I won't say inner dialogue because they're not talking, these inner messages that come to them and it gives them a desire, it gives them an emotional connection, they really want this and stuff like that. But they don't see that it's their soul trying to tell them, hey, it's time, let's do this. Um, you know, they just don't have that connection. But, you know, I, I was really excited that the people I've talked to lately who were, you know, some of the most deepest brainwashed people that just could not see anything, 
that they're starting to question. So I feel so much more optimistic about that. Plus there's just so many things that are playing out that are making it clear, you know, we're just like full speed ahead and we're headed, you know, right for the golden age. And it's super exciting. And um, I have so many more things I wanna talk about, so many things, but there's some things you have to talk about after. You can't talk about them before, you know? You have to talk, um, so many things make so much more sense to when it's um, hindsight, you know, when you're talking about what happened and stuff. And I journal a lot of this stuff and write it down so that when I say, oh, look, I knew this was going to happen, that it wouldn't, um, you know, I, I wrote it down. So it's not just me saying, oh, I knew that would happen. So anyways, I'm excited to see because I really feel like I'm, know a lot of stuff that's about to be happening um not just i mean i talk about the stuff in the world stage you know what i think is going to be happening there was some other stuff too the other day i thought of i wanted to say um i definitely think there's going to be a lot more of um like rec centers i think i've said this before but like rec centers where you know not only can you go and, you know, shoot hoops or learn karate or whatever, but it's going to have a lot of um, other kind of, um, you know, kind of like, not booths, but rooms or whatever, like our, our gymnasiums or whatever that people can all rent out. There's going to be a lot of like uh community gathering like somebody who has, can teach guitar lessons is gonna you know you can get through the wreck or somebody who is going to teach art or you know kids that are writing and you know i think there's going to be a lot more of that where people find these places to come together and offer their skills and you know i think there's gonna be a lot of that in our in the future of everybody i think there's gonna be a lot more homesteading a lot more people going out a lot more community building um a lot more traveling a lot more family connections a lot more people taking time to themselves figuring out what's important a lot more time in nature a lot more time just going out and experiencing the the world and um, going out and, um, you know, just seeing everything. There's so much to see while you're here because, you know, even in my idea of like reincarnation, it's not my idea. I mean, it's a thing, <laughs> but even in the idea of reincarnation, you come back and, you know, you're going to see the earth all a bunch of times, <clears throat> but every time it's going to be totally different, you know, everything will be different. So, you know, going out and seeing things. Um, I I don't know. I like to go and travel. I like to go and see things. I like to experience. I like to go out and see how other people live and, you know, just feel the whole thing. The world is so huge and it's so full of so many different experiences and so many different opinions. And, you know, that's what makes everything so beautiful is that um, the... It, 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 it is that, um, you know, the more that we can appreciate everybody's individu individuality, the more that we can embrace everybody's uniqueness and um, allow people to just be their weirdest self, let them just find who they are and be themselves and not question people and not stereotype and put expectation and stuff. Just let people be free to be who they want to be. I think that is how a society structures acceptance and structures, you know, non-judgmental uh, kind of um, ways of being. Just, you know, it, it makes our world bigger and more open if we are accepting of other people's perspectives and other people's ideas and stuff no matter what you know because so far you know what we've been living in is very tight structured thing you know very conforming conform conform i mean especially like right now i mean oh the badge of honor oh i'm a conformist please 
I'm, I'm, I'm a good one, please. <clears throat> you know, there's going to be, um, uh, uh, and I bet you there's going to be, uh, burning kind of like that bra burning. Everyone's going to bring these out and throw them in the fire. <laughs> you know, fuck conformity. We want to be free. We want to decide who we are and, you know, then put it out there. Be comfortable, be vulnerable, put it out there in the world, make the world a part of who you are, you know, take the world with you. And, um, yeah. I, I, I think that's how we're meant to take it on, you know, and to be proud of yourself and be proud of your experiences. And the more that a community or a society builds with all these different structures, the, the more beautiful and unique and the more understanding and uh, stuff, you know, because, you know, to me, we should be free. Uh, you know, as long as we're not doing anything to hurt anybody, um, you know, uh, to me, murder, murder's off the table, uh, you know, doing things to kids, all, nope, all that stuff is what destroys a society. And, you know, what is so, wh what gets people so mad that they have to kill somebody? I mean, really, I mean, right now we got so much going on. It's like, oh. I told her, you know, go on a trip and stay out of the city. Stay, uh, she, because she was like, oh, I want to go to Mexico. I was like, oh, don't go to Mexico right now. Besides the fact, we're in it. No, I'll drive. I'm not going to go on an airplane right now. Fuck that bullshit. <clears throat> Sit there with this thing. Don't breathe. No, thank you. That just, uh, and then besides, you know, saying like, a oh, this got me yesterday. Oh, God. I was, so, I was so mad. I almost had to come home and just do this. God, I was so mad. So now I can say, <clears throat> speaking of, so we're dry. I went to, um, oh, it was my first time I ever did a 420 sale. <laughs> I'm not like some pothead because I haven't spent a pot that much. I mean, that long. Um, you know, and the park is such a bad rap. It's, it's so ridiculous, especially like I was just reading some things, uh, recently and they were talking about, um, the magic mushroom stuff. And then there's so many studies now that are going towards using that for depression and any anxiety because it has those things. Well, of course it's natural stuff, you know, God put it out there so that you could have something natural. You know, they want to feed you chemicals, but and, um, and, and also the same with, um, uh, uh, weed I wanted to say, I mean, cause it, it, it's, it's, it's just not a drug. I, I just don't even get how, and the whole thing was saying, you know, like, oh, somebody's high, you know, well, to me, high is, um, feels connected. I feel connected to the universe. I feel like it kind of takes a, it opens a curtain you know, I can, I don't know, you're just a lot more in there with them. You can hear them and I don't know. But to me, it just connects you so much more spiritually. So, and it's such a good pain reliever for as you're aging, you know, like for me, the, my joints. Uh, and I wonder if my joints is because of scoliosis. Because today I put this dress on, you can't see it because this thing is up here. But I put this dress on and it goes buttons all the way down. And I had to keep twisting it because uh, my body, you know, I've, I've talked about before, it's scoliosis. So it's like, I don't even understand how it goes. It's kind of like your spine, like, twists. So your body kind of twists. So everything's always crooked on me. And so, anyways, the dress kept um, shifting. And um, I don't even remember what the fuck I was talking about. Why I was talking about that. Um... Something about the dress. No. Uh, I don't know. I start talking about too many things. Oh, so what made me mad? <clears throat> so I was, oh, because the 420 thing. So I went on my first 420 sale. I was like, oh, I'm doing all these firsts. I've never been to a 420 sale. I got a really good deal. So when I drove, I went early in the morning just because I didn't want to mess with the crowds. So I went early in the morning and um, I didn't even think about it would be the bus time. And I live rural, so it's, you know, 
the bus. It's, then just like you're behind it for a block and then turn. No, <laughs> it's the bus. And um, so this bus, this was the second one, and he was just sitting there, stopped. And so we're all stopped on this side, and all the cars behind him are stopped, and we're all just sitting there. And there's this kid that is standing out there, so I'm watching this kid, and he's digging around his bag. Immediately, you know what he's digging for. And in the bus, you can see like a fucking, I don't know, this guy's like standing there like an armed guard, guarding the door. You will not come in the bus without this. Oh my God, I was fuming. Not because you're holding us up. I mean, you know, um, but a little fucking kid, <sighs> and you're gonna, oh my God. What they're doing to try and make these kids conform and just like the fear and shit. Oh my God. It's just, oh, I was, I, uh, I was doing my best to make eye contact with that bus guy. And he was like, I don't know. He probably thought I was mad because he was holding up traffic or something. And I was just like, you fucking God. Oh my God. You can't even let the fucking kid come on the goddamn bus. Look for his fucking thing. And put it on no he's carrying germs it's like oh my god go learn about germs please Ugh. god that's so frustrating go learn about these go learn about this system go learn about um germs my god people oh I just uh, the people at the lake with their kids out there people walking to school with their kids it was like oh my god how can there be this many parents that put compliant above their children's health <laughs> I'm like, oh. Oh. okay let's go back to the positive people are starting to question things they're starting to that's all we need to start questioning things oh so Let's all be excited today because it's a great day. People are questioning things. We're moving full speed ahead. It's not very long and we're going to be in the whole purpose why we were born. We're headed for it now. So have a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye.